to be covering Rapid SQL. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. So as I mentioned, the projects are supported in both Rapid and DB Artisan. If you were a, a Rapid SQL customer, you've known from oh, early, early releases of Rapid SQL, we've always had project management support. Right? In the later releases of DB Artisan, specifically I'm working with DB Artisan 975, we now have support for projects within DB Artisan. So again, listening to our customers, listening to those DBAs that, that requested that support, requested those features, we're now able to um, display that and utilize that in DB Artisan. So on that, I'm going to be working with Rapid SQL today, but the functionality is going to be identical. So first, how do we start a new project? So we have a couple ways, right? We, we have the project tab. We can hop down and we can start a new project or we can open a project. We can also start it from the file menu. File, new. Here's our project. And we can also open an existing one. Now, one thing I want to start off with is going into our options tab. So we'll go to file options. And we'll look. And let's scroll down to our Looking here, where are we, Scott? All right, we're going to come back to that. And yeah, let me come back to the options. What I wanted to point out here is where we assign the um, source control. So the project facility within Rapid SQL and DB Artisan has the integration points to source control systems. And I've got, I have them um, Visual Source Safe installed. I've worked with Team Foundation Server TFS. We've worked with some of the other um, vendors out there as well. The key that we need, uh, the one requirement, is we need SCCI compliant. So obviously, um, Visual Source Safe is, T TFS is, but for those that aren't and may not potentially have that built in, um, a lot of times you can find wrappers, third-party wrappers that will make the interface. So when we when we get those wrappers installed and applied properly and configured then Rapid SQL can view that. So as I step through my project creation, you'll see where that comes into play today. Let's go ahead and start a new project. So File, New, Project. Now here's where we add our name. So let's just call this Skill Sprint Project. We can put it in a location. This location can be on our specific workstation or maybe on a network share. But so I'm going to scroll down. I have a Projects folder that I work with. So there's my RS projects. Now, add any descriptions if we want. Um, project for skill sprint. Now, initializing the new project. So we can initialize from database, from existing files, so we can pick and choose what files we want to bring into the project. And we can bring it in from version control. So we can point to our source code control provider that we have configured and pull that those files back in. or we can opt to not initialize. And by doing that, we're just going to start with a blank project, and then we can build it as we go. And for this example today, for the skill sprint, I'd like to show how to bring it in from a database. So here, just asking me if I want to create the folder. Select yes. So here is where I'm looking, presented with my list of data sources. So in this case, I'm connected to my local 2012 SQL Server instance. We'll just go ahead and accept that. We'll press next. We'll select the GIM schema. I'm sorry, the GIM database. Now we can narrow it down to pick our specific schema. So in this case, I'm going to opt for the DBO schema. So it, for my example today, what I want to show is just select a, a subset. So I'd like to bring over functions. And here we can bring over the dependent objects, but I'm going to be bringing those objects over anyway. Indexes, let's bring over our procedures, our tables, and lastly, we want to bring over our views. So again, as you see, a very, very simple um, editor, the wizard to step through. If you are using DB Artisan, this is very similar to the schema migration wizard. So then on the right-hand pane, we can expand the objects. In this database, I have no functions. Here are my indexes, so I'm going to select all. Here are my procedures again. In this case, let's only select one of those. The tables, we're going to bring all those, the tables back, and let's see what views we have. 
again, we have a few views. I'm going to select these three. So press next. Here is where we can start really fine tuning how we'd like RapidSQL at, to generate our code. So here we have the group dependencies. We can order drops based on the selection. And we can script drop statements. So if it's important for us when we build this project to always include drop statements, we have control. When we select an option here, you'll notice it's represented in the right-hand pane. So we're going to add that syntax to check to see if it's there that exists. If it does, then we'll drop it. So again, just unchecking here. And again, this is our um, example table, our example preview table. It's just a hypothetical table giving you the ability to see what options are determined. So here there's the create statements. Here, there's the script if not exist. So I can toggle that on or off as well. If we want to maintain the owner, we can certainly script the owner. If we uncheck that, you'll notice that now the DBO is removed from that. So here we'll retain that. And again, if not, we could either retain or change owner. So at any time, I can pick a different owner if I'd like. Then we have some other options. Truncate table, as well as some data movement options if needed. And lastly, then we have some the ability to update the stats. So here is our options template. So if we'd like to save this, let's go ahead and skill sprint project creation. So we'll save this. So Potentially, if we have a generic set of options that we'd like to use each time we create a new project, and we can save that in our options template. And then we're able to just drop this down and select this, and we have all those options then saved for us. So again, a, a nice usability feature to make it a little bit quicker to get started. And then lastly, then, we're ready to finish. So at this point, if I show everything, show all, we'll see the rapid sequel went through, reverse engineered, and populated the scripts. So at this point, I'm ready to move forward. I'll press continue. Now, here's my prompt. After we build the project, now I'm prompted with a dialog asking me if I'd like to add it. In this case, I'm going to select no, but if I were to select yes, I'd be prompted with their username and password dialog. It looks identical, in my case, to the, the visual source safe dialog, where, where seamless integration points there. And then at that point, it'll drop everything in to a new project called um, skill sprint underscore project within my VSS, VSS uh, database. So we'll go ahead and select no. Now we're working with the project. So at this point, I'm ready to start at any time. Right? I can double click the file. We're going to open it up in an iSQL window. I can make any changes. Maybe I want to add a comment. We can save that. So again, it's saving it back to my working folder. Right? We'll close. Well, let's go ahead. We'll just open up another. Let's open up the procedure that I have. So just easy to just double clicking. Or if you'd like, you can open it up an iSQL window, and we could drag. Oh, come on now, Scott. All right, not behaving for me today. Let's just double click. We open it up this way. So then we're able to walk it. Walk, work through, make any changes we need. For example, let's go ahead and we'll make a change. So we have that. Let me look at that. That's real-time syntax checking right there, right? Catching my error before I even put it in there. I forgot the where clause. So let's go ahead. And now you'll see that it was removed. So again, the Rapid SQL DB Artist and Usability feature coming in handy for me. So we'll go ahead and press Save there. And now we've, we're making changes. And as we make changes, then we're having them saved back to the project. Again, if this was an integrated one that was integrated with them, version control, we see these denoted as such. And we would be able to right click and check out or check back in. And then when we walk through those, you know, Wizards, the dialogues, they're going, to, they're going to be presented to us just as they would if you were working natively with the tool, as well as having the other features to look at different versions and look at the history. Now, once we get to this step, right? let's say, for instance, we, we've finished our project. We're ready, we're ready to take it to the next step. 
right? maybe we're ready to pass it to our DBA to build this project for us, or I'm sorry, to deploy the project. So at this point, this is where we reference the project menu again, and now you'll see everything else is lit up. Right? So here we can build with selections only. You'll notice that I have one selected. I can look at a build order. So if it's important for me to move the different the move the order. So I could make the broker table maybe be the you know after office location. Right? So I can pick and choose and, and move the order around. Right? We can press OK going back to the project menu here, we can add new subfolders. So if, for instance, I, I forgot to reverse engineer, um, pick another object, and you wanted to create a subfolder for those objects, we could do that here as well. Adding more files is as easy as coming to this menu, selecting Add Files, and we can pull those files in as well. Look at some of the other options. Here we're getting into version control. Right Again, we can add them to the version control this point, we can also, I skipped over adding database objects. So if we did want to go back and reverse engineer more objects, we could do that from within this menu as well. Here are the project properties, just letting us know some, some high level details about it associated with what data source and then what database. And we'll look a little further then here, the properties of the actual file that I'm working with. Again, here's my last modified date. Let's go, and lastly, there are those three for the new and the build and the open and close. So at this point, let's go ahead and build this project. So here I'm presented with the dialog. Here's my build target, right? It, it recognized what uh, data source I reverse engineered from, so it knows it's going to be a targeted against the SQL Server 2012 at the GIM database. Here we can build the subfolders or not. It's totally up to us to select. Um, we can build the script and display it in a SQL window, and we could execute it immediately, or we could schedule it to be built later. Now the scheduling is going to require you know, your machine to be on, because this is going to be a, a Windows uh, task scheduler job that's going to start up Rapid SQL, execute the call to build the script. And today we're going to just generate it right from within, and right here we're going to build and generate the SQL script. So let's go ahead and press OK, and here is my script. So that was quick. Right? We, we were able to bring that whole, all of those objects back in into one Excel file. I'm sorry, one SQL file. So as you can see, every object that I brought in now is listed. So scroll down, we're at what, 678 lines of code with all the objects that I've selected in my project to be brought over. So again, at this point, then I can save this master SQL file and push it over to the DBA or push it over to another environment where I can execute and, and build the project on the database level. So let's go back to options and let's see if I can figure out where that option is for. You know what? I'm drawing a blank right now, folks. I there, it is. there we are. Uh, under general, under version control, here is where we can pick. You'll see my available plugins that I have on my machine right now is Visual Source Safe. If I were to add the TFS client, I'd see that listed as well, as well as any other wrappers for, for other uh, version control systems. You would have the drop down here. Again, mine's by default. Here's our username, right? and then here's our working directory. If I would select on advanced, then we could actually connect, right? Not found. So I, if I go to admin, Yep. Now I'm in my source safe options. So again, this dialog looks very similar because we're calling natively. So again, we're we're working natively between the version control systems that that you are, that were configured, and you you configure Rapid SQL or DB Artisan to work with. So that's a high level view and, and some details about how to work with projects in Rapid SQL. Now, if we take a look at DB Artisan real quick, I thought I'd. I'd, I'd close on this note just to show some of the DBAs and DB Artisan customers um, on the webinar. So for DB Artisan, we would connect to a data source. It's 
not mandatory, but I'm going to select it here. And then from the project tab, new project. So again, I'm, I'm working with XC6, and this build is 9.7.5. And again, you'll see the exact um, features that you saw earlier. So if I did new project, you'll notice here that, um, let's EBA SS project. I'm going to leave it in the root folder for right now. Let's just do not initialize, and we'll press OK. Yes. And now you'll notice that we have a project tab, or a project window, if you will. So we have the project on this left-hand pane, and then we have the rest of, of what we're used to seeing. If we ever lose this, right, if, for instance, you know, maybe accidentally click on the X, we'll go to View, and we can bring it back this way, or just Project and Open Project, and we can go this method and bring it back. So again, multiple ways to work with DB Artisan with projects as well as RapidSQL working with projects.